Hey everyone, how's it going? We're looking at Ableton Live today and resampling in Live. There are five ways to do it, which I'm going to show you, and you can figure out which one works best for you and stick with that. Uh, so first off, what is resampling? It's pretty much just recording what you hear is like a lazy way of thinking of it, but it's kind of true. It basically turns multiple tracks of audio into one new singular clip, which can make it easier to kind of manage in your project. Uh, you can also just turn one track into a new clip. And usually you do that if you have like effects and stuff on it. If I had lots of reverb and processing on these pads here and then kind of wanted to print the results, we'd use resampling for that as well. Um, you might also resample because it saves CPU. Uh, so in this case, I've got a synth with a bunch of chords. And if that had lots of oscillators and stuff active, then that would actually use up a lot. And so resampling does make sense in that case as well. Okay, so we're going to look at the five methods. Uh, the first method is, we'll just call it resample method because that's what it's called in Ableton. Basically, what you need to do to find that is these buttons on the right here. You need to click the IO one and then that will show you inputs and outputs for all of your tracks. Now, you can see it picking up my mic as external in, uh, but if you click there, you can choose any other track in your session as an input for that track to record. And there's even easier, there's just one called resampling. And this resampling mode will just record whatever you hear. So if we were just to solo something and record it, we would hear just that on the recording. And that's a totally valid way of doing things. Just pick the things you want to resample as solo because, you know, this is a template session I set up for this tutorial, but in an actual song you'll have, you know, you could even have 50 tracks or something. You just want to pick like four of them to resample. So it is easiest to just kind of hold control and solo which ones you want and then bounce that down to a new track. Uh, currently, I don't need to do that because we can see this is all I have in my session. And for the sake of the example, this will work fine. So I'll just show you what elements I am gluing together first. So we've got these little piano things here. It's just like a very simple note with some delay. And we got these pads here. Cool. Uh, by the way, you can ignore these EQ8s. They're just my track defaults. I set it up so that when I insert an audio track, it comes with an EQ8 on it. I'm not really doing anything with them. Um, but if I was going to be a good boy, I would probably maybe high pass those a little bit and maybe these a little bit as well. But, you know, no big deal. It's just for the example. So anyway, let's get on to using resampling here. So make sure the track is armed. Otherwise, when you hit record, nothing's going to happen. And we've got it armed and we'll hit record and I'll show you what happens. Cool. So those two tracks are now being made into one new audio clip and we'll just check it. Sweet. So we can hear its work there. And so one thing we might want to do now that we've resampled it is play with like warp or change the pitch or something. And then it's so much easier to fuck around with it just as one track rather than, you know, warping this one and changing the pitch, then warping these and changing the pitch. And if they're all kind of part of the same element of your track, at a certain point, it does just make sense to kind of glue them together into a new audio clip, especially when you're working with, you know, layers of synths and things like that, or little percussive hits that you've all meticulously placed on the timeline and then need to get it into one solid block of audio. It's really good for that. So that's our first method. Uh, we'll just call that resampling method. The second one, so like I said, you can change uh, the input on this track to kind of take the output from another track. So let's just grab our pad sound and we'll just make that the input. And now uh, it also gives you this menu here, pre-effects, post-effects and post-mixer. They do pretty much exactly what they say. So. If we had some effects on this, which we don't really, it's just the EQ8, we would select pre-effects and it will just bypass them when we record. I don't really ever use that way of doing it because usually if I'm resampling it, I want the effects on it. So you can probably safely ignore pre-effects, but it's good to know it's there. Post effects will include the effects. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And post mixer will include the effects plus whatever mixer gain you have. Um, so I tend to avoid post mixer because it will record with that minus six dip in it to this track 
which I've also got on minus six. That's another track default I used. Uh, and then you're kind of doubling the gain reduction in a way. So I avoid that. We'll set this to post effects and we'll hit record and we will just be recording the pads even though we're hearing the whole thing. Cool, so there's just our pads there. We can hear the pianos aren't in it. That's cool. Uh, just to show you what I mean about post mixer, let's just switch it over and record it and you should see that it's softer. So this is, you know, minus six dB softer than the other one. That's just worth noting. Okay, that is method number two. One disadvantage with that is, you know, technically you can only do one track at a time, but to get around that, you can just make a group. So we'll just group these two sounds and call them stuff. And then having done that, switch that over to stuff. And then when we record this, both elements will be there again. So that's really handy. Uh, this is probably the way I use most of the time, this resampling method, just selecting the individual tracks or groups that I want to resample rather than soloing and using the kind of resample, resampling part. And part of that is because it avoids the master channel. If you have any effects on your master channel, like ozone or something like that, they will get recorded with this resampling method because this resamples off the master track. Uh, but if you want to avoid that, uh, then you just pick the individual track like I've done here. So that's one thing to note. Okay, let's call that method number two. Uh, method number three is similar, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of selecting an input here, we're actually going to change the output of these ones. I'm just going to pull that out of the group just in case it causes some problems there. Um, we're going to change the output from this one to resample, which is my track down here. And then if we just switch this to no input, don't worry, it's still getting input from this one. Um, this just more means nothing else is coming in on top. And if I then record that, we'll get the pads. Now notice that we only heard the piano that time, uh, but you can see the pads were recorded. That makes sense, that's fine, because when we plug this into resample, it cut off the audio because I had that switch to off. If we then want to kind of hear it, we we'll just switch that over to in. And now the pads are coming through here. So you can actually use this method like a bus. You could make this a drum bus and then all your individual drum tracks and stuff, just change this to say drum bus and then send them to the bus that way. Uh, I still prefer to use groups, but maybe you'll find some method that this actually, uh, maybe you'll find some application rather that this makes more sense with. So I'm gonna kind of challenge you to do that. Okay, that's method number three. Uh, method number four is freezing. Now, what this does, first of all, I better just put some effects on because otherwise it won't really make as much sense here. So let's just do a little bit of reverb and delay. And then after that, I'll put in a filter sweep. Let's get some distortion in there, get a bit of resonance in there. And we'll just automate a little quick sweep. Nothing major. And we're going to freeze this track. Now, I just in case, I'll just switch that back to master there. And what freezing is, is it, stops the kind of audio for a sec and does this. And what it's done, it's applied all those effects to the track and kind of in the background, it's made a wave file. And if you want to get at that wave file, you can just highlight this stuff and go copy and then just move it to wherever you want and go paste. And there you go. You can see it has given us the wave file of the frozen content. And if we just solo it and listen to it, we should hear those effects on there. Cool. Okay, so let's call that method number four. Method number five is a... <laughs> this is... <laughs> I just wanted to say there were five ways. This is the kind of cheat way that you're probably like, oh, come on, but it counts. Method number five is soloing things and rendering like you would with your final track. So the shortcut for that is Control Shift R 
because I'm on Windows, but if you're on Mac, it's probably Command Shift R, and then it brings up your export screen, and then just go blah, and then just type it in my audio, and then hit enter. I guess one advantage of doing it this way would be you get to kind of label it on the spot, and then it makes more sense for you later. This is good if you're saving stems as well. Like maybe if you're exporting something from this one for another session, very often I go through my old songs that never really went anywhere and I just pick the parts out of them. And instead of resampling in that case, I'll use the export function. So that has covered it. We've looked at five different ways of resampling in Ableton Live and thanks for watching. I'll see you again in my next video. Cheers.